Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. You too can look for these complexion improvements. A fresher, brighter complexion, less oiliness, added softness and smoothness, fewer blemishes, complexion clearer and more radiant. It's not just a promise, it's a proved beauty plan. Just massage your skin twice a day with palm olive's pure, extra mild lather. Rinse and pat dry. You'll actually see palm olive bring out beauty while it cleans your skin. And you can save money too. Buy palm olive in the big super bath size. Palm olive is by far the biggest selling toilet soap in Australia. It's so mild, so gentle, and now in a new brilliant emerald foil wrap. Use palm olive soap. Doctors prove palm olive soap can bring you a lovelier complexion in 14 days. Palm olive brings out beauty while it cleans your skin. Colgate Palm Olive, makers of Tact Soap, Ajax, the Miracle Foaming Cleanser, and Protex Soap, bring you the greatest shows on radio. And tonight, Colgate Palm Olive presents Winner Take All with Bob Dyer. Customers, thank you, and howdy, customers, howdy. Welcome to Winner Take All. Doll, who's our returning champ from last week? Our champion is a housewife, Bob, Mrs. Phyllis Ayers. Phyllis, a gift, tack, deodorant soap by Colgate, bath size. Glad to have you back. You've already knocked out how many opponents? Three, Bob. Three, three, Bob. Oh, three, yes, three, of course. Yes, <laughs> not three, Bob. Yes, you want an Amco <laughs> pressure cooker, a dozen faultless shirts, and a pie roller shine, two brush floor polish and scrubber. You lucky, lucky gal, you. Yes, aren't I? <laughs> now, if you keep on, you go on, knocked out 12 more people in a row, you'll be in our next battle of the champs for an Austin A55 Cambridge Saloon motor car. Doll, who is the challenger for Phyllis Ayers? Keith Curry, a student teacher. Uh-oh. Hello, Keith. Hi, Bob. What's your last name? Curry. Give it to her. That's right. <laughs> All right, Phyllis, you're up against a student teacher over there. Let's hear your buzzer, please, Keith. That's the way it sounds. We have a gift for you, too. Tack the odor and soap by Colgate. All right, now it's the buzzer against the bell. The prize we're going for is an Oto K. And an Oto K gold cap pin and pencil gift set. The answers to all these questions begin with P-A-N. Remember that? Now, I'll give you the number of letters in each word. With seven letters, breathing quickly. Challenger. Panting. Panting is right. You're one. You understand it, do you, Phyllis? Yes, All right. thank you. With six letters, a place where food is stored. Challenger. Pantry. Oh, housewife. How does he know about a pantry? All right, here's the next. Let's hear your bell. I'd be out of practice. Okay, the next one. With seven letters, a member of the cat family. Challenger. Panther. You know, you just got rusty since last week, That's Phyllis. Right. That's what happened. A yeah. person, but it doesn't work. Yes, I was thinking maybe the, the bell got a little rusty. Have you had a good week, Phyllis? Hmm. Fine, you? thank oh, you. It's fine. Very fine. All right, I thought something might have happened to kind of put you off a bit. All right, now, you are, you, the challenger is three, and you are nil. The next one is with six letters, and they all begin with P-A-N. A world-famous canal. Champ. Panama. Had a girl. Now you're getting started. That's encouraging. <laughs> Here's a little beauty with 11 letters, 11 letters, wild uproar and tumult. Champ. Oh. Call it out, customers. <laughs> oh, and there's pandemonium in your head there, wasn't yes, there? Definitely. Oh, there was. 11 letters. I think you were counting the letters. So it's a free one for you over there, Keith, and you're already three to one with five letters, a flower of the Viola family. Uh, pansy? Yes, indeed, that's right, and it brought you up into a scoring position. We may lose our champ if you're not careful, Phyllis, with five letters, an animal of the Himalayas. Champ! Panda! Panda girl, that's coming back there strong. You're two and he's four. With nine letters, a Christmas entertainment. Challenger! Pantomime. And a new champ! Pantomime is right! <laughs> Oh, 
how do you like that? We get them up and we knock them right down again. The last one was a pie rotor shine, floor polisher scrubber, and our new champ won his a note okay, gold cap, pen and pencil gift set. You have the bell now, Keith. You want to try it? Yes, please. Good boy. We have a challenger for you. Miss Ada McClure, a clerk, Bob. Hello, Ada. How do you do? Ada, we have a gift for you. Tack the order and soap. Now, the next prize we're going for is a Morphe Richard steam and dry iron. Here we go. And let's carry on now with some saints. The answers to all these questions uh, begin with saint, right? Saint. An old name for Leningrad. Challenger. St. Petersburg. That's quite right. You were one. That wasn't an easy one either. The saint who preached to the birds. Champ. St. Francis. Right, you are. It's one and one. A famous Swiss winter sports resort. Champ. St. Moritz. St. Moritz is right. She was right behind you, but you were one ahead, champ. A Canadian river on which Montreal stands. Yes, champ. St. Lawrence. St. Lawrence is right, and boy, she's really trailing you very closely there. Champ, the three challengers won. A patron saint of travelers. Champ. And Christopher. Christopher is right. You're in a scoring position. Napoleon's prison island. Challenger. St. Helena. St. Helena's right, and she's crawling up there. She's two now. Hey, that's nice going there, Ada. Here's the next one. A breed of life-saving Swiss dogs. Yes, champ. St. Bernard. St. Bernard, you're the champ. You won another prize. Nice work, man. You just won your second prize. To go with your not okay gold cap, pen and pencil gift set, your multi riches steam and dry iron is now yours. And we have a large presentation pack of Colgate Palmolive products for our retiring challenger. Just do this. Press the button on your aerosol can kill. Colgate's can kill is the world's deadliest killer of mosquitoes, flies, fleas, all insect pests. Pleasant can kill is safe. It can't harm food. It's used in hospitals. Easy too. Three seconds spraying keeps a room insect free for hours. Buy Colgate's can kill. Either press button can kill in the aerosol can or liquid can kill in the regular can. Doll, who's the next challenger? Jack Edworthy, Barber Sales Manager. Glad to have you, Jack Edworthy. How are you, Bob? We have a gift for you, Tack the Odor and Soap by Colgate. It's bath size, too. Let's hear your Thank buzzer, you. Jack. All right, let's carry on with some more saints. That's a, quite a good one here. And the last one, here's the next one. Now, careful. The famous, by the way, our next prize is a J. Farron Price clock, fellas, so fight it out. The famous London landmark designed by Christopher Wren. Challenger. St. Paul. Right you are. The largest church in Rome. Champ. St. Peter's. Right you are. It's one and one. The next one is the patron saint of England. Champ. St. George. Right. You are two. A famous road in Melbourne. Champ. St. Kilda. Oh, you go down there too, do you? I've been there, yes. We were down there not long ago. Yes, indeed. St. Kilda Road. Now, you are three. Challengers one. The famous, the capital of Newfoundland. Challenger. St. John. Right you are. Nice work. You're only one behind. Here's the next one. Okay, they want to applaud these challengers here. Here's the next one. When traveling to this town in the nursery rhyme, I met a man with seven wives. In the nursery rhyme. Remember the lines. I met a man, a man with seven wives. Saint what? Call it out, customers. <laughs> oh, these men don't know their nursery rhymes very well. It was St. Ives. So we'll go on to the next one. It's the buzzer and the bell. The Order of the Hospital of Jerusalem. Yes, champ. St. John. Right you are, and it's four. You're in a scoring position. The next one is the Organization for the Training of the Blind. A hard one, but a very... Yes, challenge. St. Dunstan's. Oh, a nice work, Jack <laughs> Edwards. <laughs> nice work. Yes, St. Dunstan's is right. A very fine organization, too. You are one behind the champ. He's in the scoring position. The patron saint of Scotland. Challenger. St. Andrew. Right you are. You tied the score, Challenger. <laughs> Boy, we're getting some scoring done here now. The second most important horse race in England, Challenger. St. Ledger. And we have a new champion! <laughs> Man, that's getting them up and knocking them down. You won your J. Farron Price clock, but you Thank did a you good much. job there, and you had a tough opponent, didn't you, Jack? I certainly did. Yes, you did. We have a new challenger for you. We have a housewife, Bob, Mrs. Eula Cross. Hello, Eula. <laughs> We have Hello. a gift for you, Eula, and it's Protex, a medicated toilet soap by Colgate. Try your buzzer, Eula. All right, now, let's, let's try... We're going for uh, three Ranleyware trays, a tea tray, cocktail tray, and magic disposal ashtray. 20-year guaranteed Ranleyware. All right, now, these are similar or opposite. Your answers will only be... will be either similar or opposite. You understand? Are the following pairs of words similar or opposite in meaning? Are you ready? Yes. All right. 
terrestrial or celestial? Challenger? Opposite. They are opposites. And here's the next one. Vagabond and vagrant. Challenger? Similar. Similar, they are. Let's hear that bell, Jack. All right, now, away we go. Strident and shrill. Challenger. Similar. They are similar. You are three. Hey, you are monster. <laughs> How about that? How about that? All right, now, here's the next one. Smirch and smear. Challenger. Similar. They are similar. And here's the next one. Oh, she's scoring. She's in a scoring position. Virtuous and vicious. Champ. Opposite. Opposite. He got in there. <laughs> That's it. All right. Now, here's the next one. Scintillate and sparkle. Champ. Similar. Similar. They are. He's coming up there. That's the encouragement he needs. Here's the next one. Orthodox and heretical. Challenger. Opposite. Opposite. And we have a new champion. <laughs> are really dark horses. Now, don't you take that literally, Eula. <laughs> Mother knows best. She buys Protex soap because it's best for the whole family. These are the reasons why Mother buys Protex. It's medicated to guard against skin blemishes, banishes odor-causing bacteria from the skin, contains a blend of rich antiseptic oils, mild and gentle for baby's tender skin. Buy the regular size Protex or the big thrifty bath size and save money. Mother, did your family protex themselves this morning? Who's our next uh, challenger, doll? A public servant, Bob, Miss Eugenie Gifford. Hi, Eugenie. Hello. We have a gift from our sponsors, this Protex soap for you. And now let's hear your buzzer, Eugenie. All right, now let, let's try some more similar and opposite. They're very good. And here's the next one. Biased and partial. Champ. Opposite? They're similar, honey. If you're partial to somebody, you're biased. Oh, yes. Similar. Yes, you didn't think it was a free one for you, Eugenie. And here it is. Equitable and unfair. Opposite. Opposite is right. You are one. Next one. Pity and compassion. Champ. Similar. It's right. It's one and one. Placid and calm. Champ. Similar. Right you are. You're one ahead. Precarious and secure. Champ. Opposite. Opposite is right. You are three. You're two ahead. Secondary and auxiliary. Champ. Similar. Right. You are four in a scoring position. Booty and loot. Challenger. Uh, similar. Right you are. That's the girl. <laughs> similar is right. All right. You are two behind, but she is in a scoring position. Two lovely matching Duro traveling cases. That's the prize we're going for. And the score is four for the champ and two for the challenger. And here's the next one. Embellished and adorned. Yes, champ. Similar. Similar and she's still the champ and she won it. <laughs> You'll cross the housewife and you won your matching bureau traveling cases to go with your three randy wear magic disposal ashtrays, tea trays, and cocktail trays. And for our retiring uh, public servant, a big pack, a huge pack of Colgate Palmolive products. Doll, who's our next challenger? Bob, this is Malcolm Hine, the senior record clerk of the Metropolitan Land Board Office. Well, that's a long title you have there, Malcolm. We're glad to have you, boy. We have a gift for you, Protex, a medicated toilet soap by Colgate. Well, would you like to practice your buzzer? Malcolm, where'd you get all those names you've got there? Well, it's just a, uh, a position, that's all. That's not a position, that's a career. <laughs> well, never mind, away we go now, and let's try some animals. I want you to tell me, uh, we're going for the next prize, incidentally, a lovely pair of Laconia blankets to make good night of certainty. All right, now, this could be your third knockout, or you could come out champ, Malcolm. Here we go. These are animals. Now, they could be real or legendary. What animals swallow the clock in Peter Pan? Champ. The crocodile. Yeah, yes, just in time too, Eula. Now, when you press that buzzer or bell, you must answer right away, but you got it in in time. It's one for the champ. This animal in Peter Pan acted as a nursemaid. Champ? The dog, Nana. Nana, that's quite right. You just give me the, the not the name, it doesn't matter, but the, the animal will do. You are too. These animals were responsible for the upbringing of Tarzan. Careful with it. Yes, champ. The apes? The apes is quite right. If you said monkey, it would have been tough. All right, you are three. Here's the next one. This one has the title of a king of the jungle. Champ. The lion. The lion is right. You're in a scoring position. That old boy. Oh, man, oh, man. <laughs> Malcolm, Malcolm, with, <laughs> with, with a title like that for an occupation, you've got to hear what it sounds like, haven't you? 
Murphy. No, no, no. Malcolm Strang on our Murphy phone. It, it, it's electrical relay, and you can't double heat. You were pressing all of those, but she beat you to it. Therefore, yours didn't sound unless you hold it down for a long time. All right, now here's the next one. The score is four to nil. This animal is often called the ship of the desert. Champ. The camel. And you've won your third prize and your third knockout. You know, I saw you pressing that buzzer, but she just beat you to it. There's a lovely presentation pack of Colgate Palm Olive products, and you've just won your third prize with your third knockout. You'll across the housewife. It's a pair of lovely Laconia blankets. Customers, we'll be back in just a minute with a battle of the champs, so don't go away. Just one brushing with Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Stops tooth decay best. You can feel how clean and smooth your teeth are when you brush your teeth with Colgate's. You can see how much whiter, brighter they are. For a Colgate smile is the whitest, brightest smile of all. Colgate's keeps your teeth and your children's teeth healthy. Gives round-the-clock protection against decay bacteria. Get the big, new, family size and save two and eleven. Colgate Dental Cream is Australia's largest, America's largest, the world's largest selling dental cream. Just one brushing with Colgate Dental Cream cleans your breath while it cleans your teeth. Stops tooth decay best. It cleans your breath. What a toothpaste. While it cleans your teeth. Customers, we pick up where we left off last week with a very exciting battle of the champs between Ken Andrews and Phyllis Johnson, and here they come back to the microphone. <laughs> nice to have you back. Hello, Phyllis. Bob? And hello, Ken. Hi, Bob. How are you? All right, you two. Grab that buzzer and that bell. Just to remind you again, uh, Ken Andrews has the buzzer, and Phyllis Johnson has the bell. A little practice, please, Ken. And Phyllis... All right, now, as everybody knows, we're going for an Austin A55 Cambridge Saloon motor car, a product of the British Motor Corporation of Australia, and the runner-up, of course, wins. That's why nobody's going to be unhappy in this show. The runner-up wins a pie, 21-inch side-tuning console television receiver. I suppose you've been tucked away with Encyclopedia Britannica. Incidentally, they supply us all the questions, and they are our authority in all of our quizzes. The score last week was 82 to 74. Ken was leading. And now let's try some general knowledge and see if we can score. It'll be very short, and now somebody's going to drive away in an Austin A55. Let's try some general knowledge. The coney, from which we get coney fur, has a more common name. What is it? Yes, Phil. Rabbit. The rabbit is right, and you went up to 75. Here's the next question. What form of animal life is the condor? Snake, bird. Yes? A bird. A bird. Quite right. I was going to give you a choice of three. You didn't need it, so you went up to 76. Here's the next one. For the purposes of local government and representation in the parliament. What are the territorial divisions of France called? Chippillas. Provinces. No, honey. They're called departments. That's right. Strangely enough, there are 90 of them, as a matter of fact. So it's a free question for you, Ken. What is the favorite pastime of a toxophilite? Uh, cave uh, exploring. Well, if he does, he'll do it with a bow and arrow because the answer is archery. <laughs> only a guess, Bob. Never mind. That was a good guess anyway. The students and artists section of any city is often called Bohemia or Bohemian. But the artistic and educational quarter of Paris is called by another name. Yes, Phyllis. Montmartre, the Latin Quarter. The Latin Quarter gave it to you. Montmartre, I think it is in, but Latin Quarter is the one we wanted. So we give you a pass there, 77 to 82. Here's the next one. We're going for an Austin A55. Boy, oh boy, what part of a church is the sacristy? Yes, Phyllis? Where well, they don their vestments. Well, and in short, yes, that, that's good. That's, that's enough. Vestments are sacred vessels. That's good enough, Phyllis. Did I, did I, did I, I think I did. Yes, all right. Now, that brought the score up to 78 to 82. And more general knowledge. Now, we're going for an Austin A55 Cambridge Saloon motor car. Boy, that's worth battling for. And that's just what you two are doing. Which was the last planet to be discovered? This old... Oh, yes, Ken. Pluto. Pluto is right, and that brought you up to 83. <laughs> All right, here's the next one. The name of what sport, if translated literally, means the gentle art? What sport? Are a form of defense. Practice, yes, Phyllis. Boxing. No, it is, no, it's jujitsu. That's right. Yes. The gentle art. Uh, that mm. uh, ju, uh, gentle, soft, yielding, and jitsu art is Japanese, I'm sure. It's 78 to 83, and the, it's a free question for you there, Ken. Here it is. How many yards are there in a furlong? In a furlong, it's 100 and uh, 240. No, 
You were uh, you you were going for it. Now, now mm-hmm. deliberately tell us how many yards there are in a furlong. Two hundred and twenty. <laughs> Two twenty. Knew it, but you rushed it. Never you mind. It's a uh, that's a uh, no score there. So that was your free question. Here's the next one. The buzzer and the bell again. What decisive battle added Canada to the British Commonwealth in 1759? Yes, fellas. The battle on the Heights of Abraham. That's quite right. But called the wait a moment. Called the Battle of Quebec. That's it. You you are quite right. The Plains of Abraham. Sometimes an alternate answer, but it's better known as the Battle of Quebec. Your first one was correct. It's 79 to 83. Let's try something a little bit uh, different now for variety. You're both obviously very equal with general knowledge as such. Now, with little teasers here, hidden titles. Both of you listen. I'll give you the author of a well-known book or play or poem and a hidden title. You must tell me the title, right? Give me the right title. For instance, a book by Margaret Mitchell, Blown Away, would of course be... Gone with, Gone with the wind. Now that's that would be the answer. Now here it is by Charles Dickens, Large Hopes. Ten right expectations. Right you are. And that brought you up to eighty-four. Here's the next one. Richard Dana, seven hundred and thirty days as a sailor. Seven hundred and thirty days is how many watts? Yes, Phyllis. Three is before the mast. How many? I'm Five sorry, years. honey, not three years, two years two before years, the yes. mast. It's so close, you see. We have to have exact rules here. You see what we're doing? She knew it, but she said three instead of two. 720, That's 365. Rough. Never mind, a free one for you, Ken. It was two years before the mast. The next one is Dante, the Holy Farce. Inferno. No, the there. Divine Comedy. Oh, yes. Holy Farce, so it's no score, 84 to 79. These are real brain teasers, you two. All right, now think about it. By John Bunyan, The Devout Wanderer's Headway. Yes. The Pilgrim's Progress. Pilgrim's Progress is right, and you went up to 80. You're still four behind, and you've been that way for two weeks, fellas. You're running neck and neck, and, and uh, as far as scoring for the past two weeks is concerned, the score is 80 to 84 for the Austin A55. And here's the next one. This one is by Thomas Mann, The Enchanted Alp. Enchanted Alp. Phyllis. The Magic Man. That's right, lady, and you are 81. You're now only three behind in the race for the Austin A55. Here's the next one by Samuel Coleridge. The antiquated sailor. Yes, Phyllis. Ancient Mariner. Ancient Mariner. She's only two behind. She's crawling up here. All right, here's the next one by Rudyard Kipling. The lamp went out. The lamp. Yes, Phyllis. The light that failed. The light that failed. She's only one behind. Ken Andrews in the race for the Austin A55. Boy, I'm getting excited. What about you, Ken? Huh? What about you? I'm dumb. <laughs> All right. All right, now, we had the last one was Rudyard Kipling's The Light That Failed. Here's a hard one by Robert Browning. Sound of a bell and the volume. Yes, fellas. The ring in the book. That's it. We've tied the score, customers. <laughs> boy, oh boy, I don't know if my nerves can stand these Battle of the Champs competitions here. We've tied the score at 84 to 84. Let's carry on with a few more of these hidden titles. And they are hiding from you, Ken. Now, come on. This one is by Charles Dickens. It's cheerless abode. Cheerless abode. Yes, Phyllis. Bleak House. Bleak House is right, and she's one ahead with 85. And here's the next one by Somerset Maugham. A crescent and a silver coin. Yes, Phyllis. The moon and sixpence. Good for you. You are now 86. You are two ahead. Let's try another one. Dostoevsky wrote this one. It's felony and consequence. Yes. Crime and punishment. Oh, man, you are now 87. Let's try a couple more of these. And here's a hard, here's a hard one. Charles Reed, Monastery and the Fireside. Yes. Cloister and the Hearth. Cloister and the Hearth. Nice work there, Ken. You got into the swing of that one. All right, now the score is Phyllis, 87, and Ken, 85. Only two behind in the race for the Austin A55. My, oh, my. That's the product of the British Motor Corporation of Australia, and one of you nice people. It couldn't happen to anyone nicer than you two. Let's carry on here and try another one. This one is by Gene Stratton Porter. Sunspots on the nose. Phyllis. Who? Freckles. 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 That's right. That's right. And that puts you up to 88. You're three ahead. Here's one by Hawthorne, a hidden title, which could be the Red Epistle. Yes. Scarlet Letter. Scarlet Letter is right. And you went to 89. And here is a hard one. Listen for this one. Erskine Caldwell wrote The Omnipotence Small Plot. 
the omnipotence small plot. They're working on this at home, so we're not going to rush it. It's somebody's little something, and it's, uh, yes? It's God's little garden. Oh, you're so close. It's God's little acre. Oh, yes. Yes, that is a pretty remote one, and it was a hard one, but, Ken, it gives you a free question, and here it is. This one is by William Thackeray, Vain Carnival. Vanity Fair. And a good score to 86 to 89. <laughs> I have three more left in this category. Let's try them. What is the hidden title here by Somerset Maugham, The Sharp Extremity? Yes. The yes. Razor's Edge. Razor's Edge. And a four, you came up to 87 there. And here's the next one. This is a, not a hard one. It's by H.G. Wells, the hidden title. I'll give you a clue. The Male Unseen. The Unseen Male. Yes. The Invisible Man. Invisible Man. He's doing it now. Well, that's 88 to 89. Ken Andrews is one behind in the race for the Austin A55. I have one more, and that's the end of the hidden titles, but we must try them again because they're interesting. Rudyard Kipling wrote... Rudyard... Did they make faces then? Yeah, all right. Rudyard Kipling wrote Seaman Brave. Phyllis. Captain's Courageous. That's right, and you went up to 90 and a, <laughs> against 88, which is a very magnificent score. <laughs> now, these are all kings and queens of England, so careful with them. Now, listen, when you think you know... Push your bell and, or your buzzer and let us know what you think. I was born in 1865, a grandson of the then reigning monarch. I married in 1893, a year after the death of... Yes, Ken! King Edward VII. Who? King Edward VII. No, George V. The last clue is I became king in 1910. He didn't wait to get enough of that. And so it's a free one for you, Phyllis. I'll have to read them all. I was born in the year 1600. My mother was Anne of Denmark. I became Prince of Wales at the age of 16 on the death of my elder brother, Henry. I succeeded my father, James I, in 1625 and married Henrietta Maria of France. I was beheaded in 1649. What's my name? Charles I. That's right, and you are now, now 91 to 88, going for the Austin A55. Here's the next one for the buzzer and the bell. I was born in 1665, a daughter of James II of England. I married Prince George of Denmark in 1683. I ascended to the throne in 1702. My most important event. Yes. Anne. Queen Anne is right, and that puts you up to 89. You're only two behind. Nice work, Ken. All right, let's try another one. Who am I? I was born in 1765. I'm an old one, aren't I? Yes. <laughs> I served in the Navy and sat in the House of Lords where I opposed the emancipation of slaves. I became heir to the throne in 1827. I succeeded George Force to the throne in 1830 and was succeeded in 1837 by my niece, Victoria. Now, what's my name? Ooh. Yes, Ken? William IV. William IV is right, and you're only one behind the score of 90 to 91. <laughs> Well, that's wonderful, you two. We'll be back in just a minute with more about the Battle of the Champs. Meanwhile, we'd like you to listen to this important reminder from our sponsors. Tact. Colgate's Miracle Deodorant Soap safeguards your freshness all over all day. Actually keeps perspiration odor-free. Laboratory tests prove Tact containing miracle ingredient G11, hexachlorophene, removes up to 95% of odor-causing germs, leaving skin odor-free. Ideal for teenage skin problems, too. Tact. Colgate's Miracle Deodorant Soap. Regular size and bath size is now in gleaming foil wrap. Buy the big bath size and save money. Perhaps next week will show us a winner to the Austin A55 in the Battle of the Champs. Meanwhile, customers, when you go in to buy Colgate Palmolive products, don't forget to tell them Bob sent you. And remember my brand new Cop the Lot show for Colgate Palmolive over these same stations at a new time on the Macquarie Network, 7.30 on the Macquarie Network. Remember that. And uh, 7 o'clock in Adelaide, we'll be looking for you with our brand new Cop the Lot show. A brand new quiz show. And I think you'll love it with, oh, hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of wonderful prizes in it. Meanwhile, when you buy Colgate Palmolive products, tell them Bob sent you. Until then, happy lathering customers! <laughs> Be listening for another of the greatest shows on radio. Brought to you by Colgate Palmolive, makers of Tact Soap, Ajax the Miracle Foaming Cleanser, and Protex Soap. <laughs>